All right, guys, welcome to the Reseller Island podcast. This is the first time in about 25 days that Sonny and I are hopping on together. Uh, yeah. He missed two weeks and then I missed a, a third week back to back to those. So finally, finally here again. <laughs> finally here again. There you go. There you go. Oh. <laughs> to, so today, guys, we wanted to talk about how people are too focused on reselling instead of making money. And I know that sounds weird, but we're going to kind of dive into that. Basically, people are so focused on doing what a coach or an influencer has told them, or they're so focused on doing something that worked two years ago, five years ago, 15 years ago, that isn't quite working today. And they're just reselling, but they're not actually doing the selling part when they should be focused on actually making money. Um, I know that's kind of vague, Sonny, but do you want to just want to try to run with that and see what, what comes to mind to you when I say that? Uh, it reminds me of when I first started reselling. I didn't know anything other than you go into thrift stores, you find items, you look it up on eBay, and then you list it compared to what you've seen. I didn't know there was a listing part and then there was a sold comps. I didn't know that until a couple of years later. So fortunately, I was able to find some really good stuff that had me uh, really look more into influencing that there was some or into reselling that there was something bigger potential than what I was looking for while I was hunting out jobs being new here in Las Vegas. So I, I think for me, how I take that is you're focused on going into thrift stores or sourcing for items that you don't keep up with your inventory to list and learn what to look for to find better profits, better items, rather than that one nugget you had in the very beginning that hooked you. And you're focused on these prices that are, say, $50, say this bottle of water always sold for me $50 two, $50 two years ago. But now times have changed. There's other options. And I'm still fixated that I want $50 because I've sold it for that price before. And I'm not letting in to change. I think that's usually the biggest aha moment for resellers is what you're talking about. Oh, well, there's like 38 listed for like $40. So it sells for $40. But then I went through this too. I'm like, Oh, sweet. There's 38 listed for $40. This thing's worth like 40 bucks. And sometimes it takes people a week or a month or six months or even years. But then they finally realize, Oh, wait, I can actually see what actually sold, how many have sold and what they're selling for. So sometimes in this made up scenario, there are 38 listed for 40 bucks, but then you click on sold and there's actually only two sold. One of them actually went for like $38 free shipping. And then another one went for $8 plus $6 in shipping. So clearly that thing actually isn't selling for what you think it is. And there's 38 of them already and only two have sold. So that means one selling every 45 days. And the chances that you're going to actually sell it within a good time frame with that much competition and that much and that little demand, it's just not, it's not going to work out for you. But um, kind of what, kind of what I was thinking about talking about was uh, I don't know. There's this thing where you were kind of talking about it. People find their, their thing that was successful. And then it kind of, it stays successful for months and months or even years and years, but eventually it kind of stops working but it did work. And so I'm just going to keep grinding. Um, a lot of times people get into this mentality of like, oh, I just got to work harder. And that's where the, the phrase work harder, work smarter, not harder comes to mind. Mm -hmm. I actually like to say work smarter and harder. But there's just this thing where people are like, you know what, I'm just a clothing reseller. Or I only list on eBay. But they'll come across this item We'll, we'll just keep it super vague. It's a perfectly functioning item that's big. And you don't know how to do freight. And you don't know how to do any of that. And I'm not saying to do any of that. But you, you, you look it up on Facebook Marketplace and you see that it's selling locally for $800. And it's only 15 bucks at the thrift store. But people pass on that because they're just a clothing seller and they only list on eBay. And I think that it would be very wise for people to be like, don't just be an eBay clothing reseller, but be someone who actually makes money. Pick that thing up for $15, 
put it on Facebook marketplace for 800. And if someone offers you 600 bucks for it, say, yeah, meet me at, meet me at Kroger or meet me at the gas station. You know, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's so many options and that's one thing you and I both were talking behind uh, before we got, when live was that when people focus on one platform like eBay, it's mm -hmm. great until it's not enough because you're going to have to change along with the changes in time, trends, influencers, and not content creator influencers. Well, yes, some of them, but like celebrities, music artists, people that are making these trends of items that could sell now that you might be having sitting around or might come across very soon because you're keeping up with this stuff. Um, so seasonal trends are good. Popularity is good. But when I look at a lot of people that complain, I don't ask them what they're selling on because I don't want them feeling like they're attacked. I'll go and look on their bio, whether it be on Instagram or even on on YouTube. I'll look in their description. Where is their stuff available for me to find? Because a lot of our viewers may be interested in an item that we share with them. They're going to want to try to hunt it down. Some may ask you and some may want to be willing to look for it because they know the process of where this information should be. And I always talk about being convenient. Uh, having it convenient to your viewers and potential customers, because that is what I'm learning to do. It's not just say I sold something, but to have it available in case maybe somebody's interested. So when I look at majority of the people that talk about eBay are only on eBay and they're complaining about eBay. And then they'll talk good about eBay because they're selling the stuff that they're happy to highlight and share with them. But they're only putting all of their eggs in one basket. And I didn't learn this until a long time ago that that is not the best way to go because I've seen other people get in trouble with eBay of things that they listed or they said it wasn't them. It's uh, uh, this or that. You can never prove what their actual story is. So I took their example to not make myself an example of I'm only going to be on eBay and if I ever do something wrong with, without the intentions of doing so, it's unintended and it gets locked down. What am I going to do now? I am back at square one where I started where I was trying to figure out how to make money. Now I got to go on another platform and start fresh all over. So for me, mentioning this cross-listing in a way is really good. I got away from it and I'm going to get back to it. But the more of what I'm saying is don't have all of your eggs in one basket, have a plan B, C, D, don't limit yourself, but also don't overwhelm yourself. And that, that's important too. Don't limit yourself, but also don't overwhelm yourself. And it's really hard to uh, find that good balance. Yeah. But yeah. My, my philosophy when it comes to reselling on eBay is I would just stick with eBay for a while, but I wouldn't only sell on eBay forever. I would branch out, like you're saying, and, and cross us to Poshmark and Mercari. There's a lot of, it's interesting because I'm selling a lot more on Amazon. I'm actually making a video right now that may go live before this or may go live shortly after about Amazon is a different game because it is race to the bottom in a lot of a lot of items in a lot of categories and there's a ton and a ton and a ton of nuance but i highlight a lot of that in this video because i've made several thousand dollars off of logan paul because <laughs> he's the him and ksi are the owner of prime right and prime does a lot of collaborations with um the ufc or with soccer teams because KSI is from the, is from the UK and he's super into football. Uh, they do all these collaborations and a lot of times they will drop a collaboration prime drink for 289 at Walmart that sells for 500 and for, not for 500, sorry, for $55 on Amazon. And there's a ton of Amazon sellers that are just like all eggs in one basket on Amazon. So I'm going to buy all of these at Walmart and then I'm going to ship them to Amazon and then I'm going to FBA them. But by the time it gets to Amazon, that market has already been so saturated that now they can actually only sell those bottles for $14, which is still a great profit. But what I do is I get there first, I buy all of them and then I just sell them on eBay. I, I usually sell the majority of them within the first three days and then I ship them out to all the customers. Now the huge demand has gone down slightly because me and other re eBay sellers have already captured that market. By the time it finally gets to Amazon a few days later and they start shipping it out FBA, now the price is already throttled down to 26 and then to 14. And then it's either sell cheap or hold for the future. So even Amazon sellers, they just don't be an Amazon seller, be someone who makes money. Don't be an eBay yeah. seller. Be someone who makes money. Don't be just, right. don't be just, and, and on the flip side of this too, is like a lot of people are like, oh, I hate eBay and Mercari and Amazon. I hate returns. I hate fees. 
I only sell on Facebook it. Marketplace so I can avoid fees and avoid hassle. It's like, but you're just leaving so much money on the table there as well. I think, I think we just get into these like comfortable modes and then we'll just complain on the internet that things are slow. Yeah. And also with that, uh, I hate this, I hate that in the bickering. And you could have a lot of truth to what you're saying, a lot of people out there. But what I don't see is something following up with what you like about what you do to keep you in that mindset of, I want to continue doing this, although not everything's working. Like nothing ever does, even working a nine to five, which I did for years, all the way from even before I was a legal age to work, 13 years, watermelon fields, string beans, irrigation lines, and then 16 my mom at the time signed a, a waiver for me to work at Pizza Inn in Pleasanton, which was an amazing place. So I've always worked for things and I've always, unknowingly, I've always looked at what I wanted out of what I was putting myself into. And if, although it was hard work and stuff that I was doing, I wanted to be happy about it. And that's where my personality comes in. And I'm sure Jake does too, and a lot of other people, but I think a lot of people miss out on sharing the fun and joy that they have with what's working and teaching people how to overcome these little obstacles that bother them, maybe some more than others to continue going rather than just boohoo me and let me get some attention because you start building bad habits. And that's where I like to tell my stories and leave people on a better note to encourage them rather than you shouldn't do this. Cause I would take a negative thing. If I was to start reselling and hurt Jake with his following, right? Cause followings do matter when it comes to influencers. If I was to look at Jake on his first video that I experienced and he was just nothing but complaining about everything and not telling me what he's doing good, then I would only be like, well, eBay's not for me. This guy up here with so much thousand followers is telling me it sucks. I'm not going to do it because it sucks. And that would that would be my lasting impression until somewhere somebody influenced me different. So there's a lot of things are reselling that when people who share their stuff, I wish they would share good stuff as well, but also share their negative stuff and teach people how to, how to get better at it and not to make the same mistakes rather than just almost gatekeeping this information to make me fish for you to get views or watch time hours. Oh yeah. Now there's, there's, uh, I, I don't like the whole gatekeeping thing and, uh, you know, there's reasons why people gatekeep and that's, that's okay. You know, yeah. you want, you, you want to take care of yourself and your family first and then others second, right? That that's the principles that I live by. If you can really take care of yourself and take care of your family and you still have extra, then you can really start changing other people's lives. But if you don't have enough to take care of yourself, your family, you're not going to be able to change anyone's lives. So take care of you and yourself first with the goal to be able to help others out as well. But yeah, I can, I can talk about that for hours. Uh, give more than you take and you'll be given more than you can ever receive. Like it's just, it just happens that way. But anyway, when it comes to, and I, we can talk, we can talk about the human psychology and the numbers until I'm blue in the face. I just did, I just did a live about this yesterday. Um, like several days ago when you guys are watching this on Monday, but I just, I, I just said this all along and I'll keep saying it like only 10 to 20% of the people in any industry make 80 to 90% of the money. And it's the 80% of people that are picking up the scraps that are, that are complaining and saying that it can't be done and that things are saturated or everything. And uh, I don't want this to be negative. I want it to be positive. Like you can do anything in this world. Just go be better than the person next to you. That's, that's really all it takes. You know, everyone says that uh, reselling is dead. Um, that's, uh, those videos are made literally every single week of the year, every single year. It doesn't matter if we're in an upturn or a downturn or a sideways turn or flag, um, stagflation, deflation, inflation. It doesn't matter what's going on. There's going to be 80% of people that are only sharing 20% of the revenue. And those, and those people are really loud on Reddit and Facebook and YouTube and they get listened to. But I really just want you guys to know that if you aren't making enough money, reselling i say this as as humbly and as and in the most positive way possible it's because you do not yet have the skills or the knowledge to make the money that you want to and you totally can acquire those skills and knowledge but you you have to do it you have to be better than your competition yeah you you want more do more and back to the the scraps right of people saying it's oversaturated and there's scraps 
okay, well, do you want to make as much money and put as much work as those people are that are making it? Or do you want to make enough that ha that makes you happy and that you know, like for me, let me throw myself in there. I was talking on Captain Earth Slipper's channel on Tuesday and I was saying if I wanted to make $50 right now, mm -hmm. I would be able to make $50 right now, guaranteed. If I wanted to make $500 right now, I know I, I won't be able to go to the same place, platform, like whatnot, to make that $50. I would have to make hundreds of dollars on another platform. I would go over to knickknacks. I would take different items of what I have because I am, an, I am a very aware of what sells where and how much I can make. It all depends on what I want for myself and the goals that I'm making on a weekly, daily basis. Or if things come up, birthdays and things, and I want to add more to it, then I'm going to do it, especially going on vacation. Uh, just, uh, what, a little over two weeks ago, I was there for two weeks. Ladies and gents, I've been sharing the daily vlog channel. And I said, I want to make as much money as I can. And in three days before we went on vacation, I made $1,300 in profits. That's in profits off the of things that I've had here sitting around and getting organized. If I could do it, and I'm I'm a very, it's probably wrong to be saying this, but I'm a very simple person. I am simple minded. I just keep things to myself. I want to have this, but I know I want to get better. And I keep that simple, gradually growing with what I've learned over the six years of reselling to be able to do this. And if I could do this, you could do it a lot faster because for years I didn't have people like Jay Ride, uh, Kevin Commonwealth Picker, um, the crazy lamp lady. I didn't have all these other people that I was following that I could learn from. It was all on my own experience of my wife told me that there was this thing called thrifting. I just saw eBay and I just used those two little things back and forth with my cell phone. And I did good. Now I do so much better. But what I found off of making money is that better comes with me being happy and finding my space within my own little bubble that I'm creating, my own little paradise. And again, if I could do this, you could do it and so much more because you have more accessible to you. And if you're here, then you're very, very well aware of what you need to do is just taking in what we bring out for you to listen to and for you to apply. It's good to listen and be soaking in everything, but if you're not taking it in and applying that, then you should really be kicking yourself in the butt. It sounds like what you're saying is uh, you kind of sucked and then you yeah. just kind of sucked less and then you sucked less. And yeah, sucked that's less. that's all that we do. We suck and less I, in time. Exactly. Uh, like, I don't know. There's a reason why my beginner's guides to eBay have hundreds of thousands of views and then my more intermediate or advanced topics on eBay get 5,000 to 20,000 views because people start things and then they stop and they start and they stop. If you want, if you want to be successful at anything, just do it for eight years. Like literally just do it 300 plus times a year, every year for eight years and you'll be good at it. Now you may be terrible with finances and you may make 180,000 and spend 210,000. That's a completely different discussion. But if you really just try to do things and get better at them every single day, then you're going to you're eventually going to be good at it as long as you have as long as you want to make money and get better instead of I'm just an eBay reseller and I I don't I don't adapt whatsoever and it's it's eBay's fault and it's my area's fault and it's influencers fault and it's social media's fault and it's Google's fault. None of those things are going away. It's only getting worse. AI is, AI is going to um, change the industry. Google changes the industry. AMC does American pickers and it changes the industry. History channel does pawn stars and it changes the industry. <laughs> like, I hate, I hate to be this bearer of this news, but like, it's your fault if you're not making enough money on this platform, it, you know, in this, in this, in this reselling there's there's so many ways to make a ton of money and all it takes is now i don't i don't want to get preachy and stuff but i am like look in the Do mirror it. and say why why how much money am i making right now how much money do i want to make what is it that stands in the way of me making that much money it's probably because I have a high stress job 
And when I get home, I don't have the best relationship with my family members. And so I'm stressed. And then when I do my job, I'm already in that stressed environment. And then when I hear someone else talk about the negative side of reselling, I just mesh with that so well. And I just love hearing it that other people are struggling so I can feel good about struggling too. Instead of saying, you know what? I'm super stressed. I'm probably super stressed because I'm $72,000 in debt. This is just a made up scenario. $72,000 in debt to my car loans and my student loans and my credit cards. And every single day I wake up thinking, holy cow, I can't get out of this. If you get out of that, you'll be better at reselling. If you get it, like, <laughs> I don't know. A lot of times getting better at reselling isn't even watching and consuming content about reselling. It's learning about your relationship with God. It's learning about your relationship with money. It's about learning about your relationship with your wife and yourself and getting better at those relationships. And all of a sudden you'll wake up and you'll be like, oh, I'm only $32,000 in debt. Oh, I'm debt free. Oh, I have $100,000 in the stock market. Holy cow. It took 32 years. But I'm a millionaire. This is great. Thank you. Wow. This is awesome. I don't know. I think that if you want to get better at reselling, you got to get better at yourself. You really do. And no one wants I think that's where goals come back into play that we talked about before, that goals will have you lined up to have these milestones that you reach and you get to see what you've done for yourself and stick to it. And that will really motivate you to go to a bigger goal. And the thing is, what I've learned with goals also as well is that you don't want to aim too high that is not reachable. You want to have it just there enough to say, hey, that's a pretty good mark. And I've done this to keep going and going and going. So again, have goals with that, because if you don't, you could just go left and right and go all these different avenues and say, you're going to come back to it without having that mindset of like, there's that finish line and I see it and I'm aiming for it rather than just aiming blindly every day saying, I need a list of what we started with. Uh, I'm, I'm just reselling. Well, what's reselling? What, what is your purpose of reselling? Why are what are you trying to get out of it? Is it just money? Is it maybe you don't you don't care about being happiness? Some people don't. They're just I just want to make money and that's it. Some people want to find their happiness and their peace, but it's all different on everybody of what they're working on for themselves. And they have to continue to remind themselves until that's who they are without even having to think about it. Yeah. So as an influencer on long form and short form. I get a lot of people saying that they can't, they can't do what we do because of their area or because of their thrift stores or because of all these, all of these outside influences. Right. And sometimes I actually talk with these people and a lot of them aren't worth talking to. A lot of them just want to complain and want to like attack and all that stuff. But every once in a while, you'll find one that will actually have an engaging conversation with you. And I'll ask them and I'll say, when was the last time you picked up a DVD VCR combo player? And they say, oh, I don't sell electronics. Okay. That, that's why you're not making money on eBay because you are only willing to do what you're comfortable with and you're only willing to do what has made you money two years ago, 15 years ago, 25 years ago. When was the last time that you sold something on Facebook Marketplace? Oh, it's, it's just too much hassle and it's not, it's not worth it. Okay, show me a detailed explanation of, of why show me show me the the roi show me how much time you spent like when you a lot of times you'll be like oh it's not worth it to sell things on facebook because it takes so much time away from me listing and sourcing but then if you like actually run your numbers and be like wait I actually i was making like 85 dollars an hour doing that selling vacuums on facebook maybe i should just get back to doing that a little bit more because i've kind of strayed away from it because i really like shipping out only sunglasses um and making eleven dollars each pair because it's a lot easier and they ship faster and it's annoying to have people come to my house or to go to a gas station and make 85 bucks from a vacuum but doing that i actually made more money it was just a bit tougher but it, emotionally it felt like i wasn't making as much money because i can very easily justify gas time people not showing up it's like dude just fix the problems that make money I, I I don't know. I'm just, as you guys can tell, it's a bit frustrating. Just, I just want you guys to make more money than you ever have. And it's you that's standing in your way of that. So I want you, I want you ladies and gents, them day there's, I want y'all to make money and also be happy with it. Yeah. Uh, I, I want you happy in your own space and not care what other people are making. Be happy with, you can make 
this week or did make last week and what you're going to make from what you're learning. You're going to make so much more as long as you just stay within your own being and not take other people's uh, comparing yourself to others. It's good to have people that do very well. Like I've always said, I like that there are, say, YouTubers that are larger than me. I like that there are people that are selling more than me and they're making hundreds of thousands. Why? Because that tells me there's space for me to grow rather than everybody's at a thousand, say on YouTube and everybody only makes a thousand dollars a month. Then that wouldn't be very motivating for me. That's um, what other than, oh, maybe I'll try to break that. You know, there's these tiers that we, or we take it and some people complain and I look at it as a positive. I got space to grow. I just need to figure it out and learn and ask questions from those people that are bigger and larger than me. Maybe they reply, maybe they don't, like Jake said. Did you know that's how Snapchat works? Yeah. 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 If you if, if you and I are both on Snapchat and we both have at least a thousand followers and we follow and we follow the uh, requirements, if you post a video that gets eight million views and I post a video that gets eight thousand, we both get one thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's changes funny. are coming to that platform eventually. But yeah, when they first launched, there was these there was these kids just making viral videos and they were getting paid like eight hundred thousand dollars for one video that got 40 million views. And then Snapchat was like, there's this guy named David Dobrik. He's like actually a celebrity now, uh, but he just got bit. He's just he was just uh, I think he's from Iran and his parents um, just came came into the country a few decades ago and he just started making vlogs. And now like he. He's like an actual, like legitimate celebrity, but he made like $4 million in two days off of Snapchat. And then they, they, they like shut that off. They're like, okay, this is a problem. We have to come up with a new system. <laughs> cause like he was, cause his, his vlogs, they just, they get millions of views on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. And uh, they got millions and millions of views on Snapchat. And so they had to, they had to fix their system. But again, that's just a, that's just a company um, adapting and fixing problems. And it's, it's what we should do to survive and make money too. I don't know. Apple, Apple looks completely different today than it did 25 years ago. And a lot of that is technology and innovation, but the majority of it is just adapting. Just like people don't want chunky pinkish see-through green computers anymore they people buy them though. people buy them but yeah, yeah no, like v- vintage collectors buy them now yeah. but you're not gonna get 6.2 billion in sales every quarter yeah. selling selling the same stuff that they did 25 years ago you know yeah you're, because you're they built that the brand not individuals them. yeah i don't know i just think that uh if you just if you just focus on on being a better person and then just just letting things come to you instead of, you know, just listing what you've been listing all this whole time, whether it has a good sales through rate or not. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I think that people can make a lot of money and be really happy doing this, but there's, there's really, 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 really negative sentiment in our space right now. And it happens, it happens every summer, but uh, this one, I, I feel it even more just because, you know, we're, we are reverting to the mean of, non-pandemic levels people i had friends that the government was giving them forty six hundred dollars a month to sit on their butts because they had a job and then they claimed uh covid unemployment and so then the government just gave them close to five grand a month and they had minimal bills uh sleeping at their parents house so they bought tamagotchis from their childhood and they bought teenage mutant ninja turtles off of ebay and now they're not making forty six hundred dollars to just sit on their butts anymore, so they're not buying tamagotchis or teenage mutant ninja turtles. So we got to we got to adapt to that. There's oh man, I wish people would give me money like that. But I also <laughs> like that I don't have handouts. That I'm not in the same situation I was before, where I leaned on my parents uh, to be like, "Hey, can you help me out?" And they're like, "Yeah, here. What do you need?" I like that I don't have that anymore, and I only depend on what I work on, and no. Because when you have people, folks, when you have people that say they're your friends and they give you a little pat on the back and they, you know, highlight you. I ended up coming across somebody that did that. And what came out of it was pretty ugly, uh, a big mess on YouTube um, and social media. And one of the biggest things that really struck a nerve was when people were commenting, 
nobody would know you or you wouldn't be as successful if it wasn't for them. I already had a following before them. I was already successful in my own way. I could compare and say they may have more subscribers, but I had more on this side. But more is always an opinion. And I really like that I didn't fall into this negativity and, and wanted to say what I really want to because I valued myself more and knew that if I was to put out negativity, it was just going to end up taking more away from me of what I've built for myself. So again, when you come to work and wake up wherever it is that you do, focus on you and yours. Don't get caught up in negativity. You really have to tell yourself, is it worth it? Is it not? What is it that I want? And I think affording things now compared to when I was reselling, I was very timid about anything that I bought. And now I'm like, I'll spend a hundred dollars on that. I'll spend $50 on that, but it's not so freely. I'm still thinking about, well, okay, if I take away this, I'm still going to budget myself and I'm getting better at saving. Like I told Jay, right. That I, I said, I'm getting better at making better decisions, faster sell through rates. And one of them that I've been fortunate enough to come across is the cool brand. And the four of them that I've showed within a, a about a month's time frame, KUHL, I've sold every one of them within three days for $30. Yeah, and those are things it's like when people hear this stuff about what people are selling and you say you want to get better, are you looking for it? Or are you driving just to your thrift store and looking for it there? You, are you looking on Facebook? Are you looking on uh, offer up? Are you looking on the next door neighbor app, whatever that is? Are you asking these things without having to waste any gas with what Jay Wright was saying? Because people do that. They'll go and say, I'm sure Jay Wright has gotten it. I gotten it. Oh, you made that much money, but how much time did you take to get to the thrift store? How much time or gas did you spend to get to the flea market and then come back? I just didn't talk about like it today. Your effort <laughs> on something that you made when it doesn't matter. And many people know those are just idiots, but a lot of people know that there's value in what people are sharing and it's for free. The only thing you have to pay for is attention. No, yeah, I, I literally just made a TikTok today about how resellers are lying, are lying yeah. to themselves. Bro, you know how much gas you spent to to turn this seven dollars into one hundred and fifty? <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't use any gas. I used a drone. But you know, people, you know what I've learned about that. I'm going to change the subject on this of how you react to other people, right? I learned this from Art of Resale. Uh, he grew up very fast on say TikTok, YouTube as well. But the attention and the the feedback he was getting what not always positive on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um, it's starting to wash out a little bit where there's not as much negativity and and dum-dums on there, but there still is. But what I learned from Art is that somebody was questioning him and it sounded like they're making fun of him. And then he just replied, how does that make you feel? And I thought that was genius that he's not giving in. He's just replying back. He's getting their attention because what? We, we need attention in a way to get more time, watch time and views. And that helps. So I that little thing, I started looking at everything and he would spend the time who knows how much comments to reply back. So after that, I've started learning how to be better at comments that come my way. I'll either leave like a little smiley emoji face. You know, if I find it offensive, I'm not going to add words to it. I'm just going to put a smiley face. It might be dumb, but I do do that to maybe get under their, ner- their nerves like they got under mine. But I'm not going to waste any more effort on that. But I'm also not blocking anybody anymore. Like I did okay, before. you ready for the hack? If, if someone hack? types out a... Oh, yeah. if some- if someone types out a long negative comment or even a short one, um, there's usually a reason why they, you know, they're just unhappy with their current situation or they, they need that release. And I'm perfectly okay with, mm-hmm. with people doing that to me. It makes me money. So that's great. When people leave a comment like that, all you do is you say, huh? And then their pride, they can't not reply to you and say the yeah. whole thing over again in a different way. And then it just creates, and, and then, and then you can just you know, keep being, keep being, keep being, keep responding back to it. So like, like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, if you can just keep getting people to comment, it's not the comment here. Here's another thing that, that a lot of people don't understand. Comments don't get you more views on YouTube or TikTok. Having people stay on your TikTok longer is what gets you more views. And so people are like, oh, make sure you respond to comments. Okay, that's not what actually gets more views. It's how you're responding to comments. What your goal is to make a chain, a thread chain for people to read. Because it's 
they're on TikTok to be entertained. And the most entertaining thing in the world is drama. And so if you can get someone to comment back and forth with you eight or nine times, then Sonny, who's never seen my video, swipes onto it and then he sees the 19 comments. <laughs> and then you see the 19 comments and then you just read the whole thing. And then you're like, oh my gosh, this is wild. And then you go through and you see... Are there any other more negative comments? And then you're just entertained by that. And then you just swipe to the next one. Now, instead of spending a minute and one second on my TikTok, like I wanted you, like the, the video is, you spent four and a half minutes going through my comments while the video is playing in the background. And TikTok is like, oh, sweet. People are staying on our app 19 times longer than the average 20 seconds that, that, to, that a, a single TikTok provides. Yeah, we're going to push this out more. And so... You don't want to just like respond to just respond. You want to like emotionally trigger people to stay onto your, onto your content longer. And I, and I haven't had as much time to do that recently. And my views on TikTok are down significantly. But when I get back into just baiting people into staying on my content, then I make more money through content. It doesn't really work on YouTube because people are going to, you know, stay on your nine minute long video or they're not. Um, it, it helps a little bit, but. The comment, the, the reason why comments help short form content is because it's pe it's keeping people on the content for three minutes instead of 15 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. In interesting I... stuff. But a lot of people, again, with our topic, they'll just be like, oh, TikTok is dead. They only support big accounts. They don't give new, they don't give beginners any real shots. I'm stuck at 200 views. There's no, I've done everything. No, bro. You just, you just uh, like, I'm sorry. You just don't, you haven't yet acquired the skills to get more views on TikTok. Go learn from people that are better than you at it. Go compete with them and see what happens. So any of you guys that are trying to grow on TikTok, don't throw your morals out the window, but just bait people into conversations with you on your on your TikToks and you'll get significantly more views. Yeah, or if you don't have morals, just do you. Or if you don't have morals, yeah, just, just uh, make sure you stay within the guidelines of TikTok and uh, don't yeah. get banned and just trigger people to comment comment even longer that's why political channels on tiktok and facebook and instagram always do really well because people just argue back and forth if you can get people to argue back and forth without you being in the conversation that's when you that's when your uh that's when your content really goes viral and so that's why people talk about controversial subjects um like exposing people yeah exposing like exposing goodwill <laughs> you got one of those or recently or exposing, these, or exposing other people. resellers yeah. No, but yeah. Uh, that that's what that's what gets uh, that's what gets you going in the content. If you can find something that like fifty one percent of people agree with and forty nine percent disagree with, that's that's how you go viral. You know, if you can just get the fifty one percent to argue with the forty nine percent in the comments, that's how you go mega viral. You know, with reselling, it's it, it's difficult because a lot of people disagree with reselling and only a few of them do but if you can get really passionate followers that like to defend the influencer not usually the case or just what the influencer is doing buying things for cheap and selling them for higher those are the people that you want to see your videos videos so they can argue with the people in the comments and be like they're keeping things out of landfills they're making their you know things like that that's how that's how you get views on this on that type of content um, I want to ask you, you just had or were exposed on a video recently yeah. uh, with other people. Does that affect your channel in any way? Or did you not notice anything? Like algorithmically? Like followers, unfollow, the comments no. that came your way? No, nothing like that. And, and I'll, I'll speak on that video by Zach Rios. Um, I appreciate it. I like it. Um, he didn't he didn't like you know, some people may have may have viewed what he did as an attack on me, tech, uh, Kayla and hustle at home mom. But I, I didn't. He was literally just saying like, hey, listen, all you beginners out there that see people that do really well on so on social media, just understand that that probably isn't going to be you. But then he blamed it on things outside of their control, which is what I disagree with, instead of things that they can control. So I, I, I like what he said. I like that he was warning people of like, hey, it's not super easy to make a ton of money from thrift stores or garage sales. But what he what he said incorrect, in my opinion, is he said, it's your area's fault or it's other other things outside of your own influence. 
all I, all I say is I agree with Zach up until he blamed Aria. What I say is it's your it's the individual's fault for not acquiring the knowledge of how to get the items that sell, how to present them in a way to get them to sell, and how to find the buyer to facilitate the sale. All of that is what makes you successful at reselling, not not the uncontrollables. It's, so, like for example, like all of these hard to believe but i'm holding like like twenty five hundred dollars in profit because these are all ray-bans and cannons all of this was bought off of ebay for less than two hundred dollars it doesn't matter if you are in florida or utah or kentucky or kansas or north carolina or south carolina or maine or new york it doesn't matter where the heck you are you could have bought that instead of me. I'm, I, I, and I say this as humbly as I can to illustrate the point. I'm just better at that than you. Like that's all, that's all it is. So you have to find out how to beat me or other people that are sniping things off of eBay. It has nothing to do with your area. It has everything to do with you and your skill set and your mindset. And you can get better at it. But a lot of times it's your bad relationship with your family or with your God, or with yourself. If you can fix those three things first, I know it sounds weird, and I know people disagree with me, but if you can better those three relationships and your financial relationship, you will be better at eBay sniping. I know it doesn't make sense, but trust me, it makes sense. To me, it makes sense, because that when I was looking for a job here, again, back to the beginning of reselling, my relationship with my wife was like bumping heads all the time. Are you looking for work? Yes, I'm looking for work. You see me on the computer day in Indeed. and day out looking for work, right? Indeed. Same app, time, right? Like, what's that? <laughs> Did you ever look on Indeed? Yeah, I was on the yeah. Indeed. It's uh, funny about that if I remember and don't squirrel out of this. Uh, but at that time for a while, until I got a job months later, um, I had just then started reselling, right? It wasn't right away that I learned reselling when my wife got her job, but when I was starting, I was having what felt like a, a nightmare, a headache, just from the moment I went to sleep, the moment I woke up, I knew there was going to be an argument or it took it too personal. Of like, mm -hmm. yes, I'm looking for a job. Like, stop asking me. I am trying, you know, and, and you see it, but maybe they don't. So not until I started reselling and, and making some money, I, she was the ones I was almost immediately saying, like, look at the potential of this. I should just do it full time. It's better than having a job for me. And she said, no, get six months um, and make this much and, you know, you could do it. And then I got to the six months and I made more than what we were, we thought I would make. And then another six months, now it's a year. She said, wait, wait a full year now. And if you make this much, then you do it. So she kept in a way pushing me because she is more of the security person. She needs to know that there's a fixed income so we could take care of stuff. And which is very, very good. A lot of people would call that old school or just being smart. For me, I just saw like I could do this. But in time, I saw that I could progress and learn this stuff. But it was really hard having uh, be, it's really hard being in a relationship and having financial struggles because it feels like it's such a big burden until you get out of it. But when you start balancing everything, like Jake just mentioned, everything, if you believe believe in religion or any faith that you believe in everything starts coming clearer and it's not so much of a headache and you could focus and that's one thing recently with being organized and being able to make a lot more money of through reselling i've been able to get the things that i want off of what i want to do reselling freedom i got a peace of mind i get to live in the comfort of my own home i could leave if i want to or just source from my garage of things that i bought in bulk and clearing up and the relationship is one thing that was always key for me to improve on, but not only with my wife, but for myself, the things that I was going through with PTSD and anxiety. And if it wasn't for me believing in myself and seeing that I could do this through reselling, then I could have probably did it through a job. But I found this to be the way that I wanted it to work out. And it has. And it's been a tremendous uh, feat from where I started to where I am now. I don't know. Let, let us know in the comments if uh, if if we're way off base here. Like, is it is it you or or is it your area? Like, is it is it eBay or or is it the entrepreneur? I'm I'm just I'm just interested to see because 
like there there's very credible people who are actually good at business and who are actually good at ebay who are who are complaining that like you know you know what like it is just impossible to to make to make a living reselling and i, I just i just i disagree i i you know but am i wrong like i just i say all the time like if elon musk could only make money reselling on ebay he'd be the number one ebay reseller no no doubt in my mind just because he's just better at business than us he just has a higher iq than us. he just solves problems better than us um if you i don't know there i i think it just comes down to the individual of of whether whether you're going to be successful or not and i think the way that you become successful and i don't want to keep beating this in, in the face but is is establishing better relationships with yourself and with your family and with your money with your god i really i really think those four relationships will make you so much more successful and i and there's a lot of logical people and i, I consider myself very logical and numbers driven and uh i'm always i always get reminded that emotions are necessary and that sometimes a lot of times it's emotions that hold people back i think that you should limit emotions as much as possible within your business and be as logical as you can but I'm on the other side of that spectrum where it, sometimes I just get so logical into things that that's what's holding me back. And it's like, okay, I do need to spend more time in my other relationships, not just my relationship with money <laughs> and free selling. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm on that other side of the emotional part that I've shared time and time again with you on here and in person, but get, again, getting organized and, and having things in place has really helped me be more logical and make better decisions rather than being cluttered and overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, me, me and, uh, me and Archie talked about it a few weeks ago, the, the organized chaos versus getting, getting organized. Even if you, even if you perform well under organized chaos, statistically, you still will just do better if you're organized. It just, it's just the, the data is there. There's always anomalies. And a lot of times we always think we're the anomaly. It's like 2% of day traders make money, 98% don't. We always think I'm going to be part of that 2%. But if I, if, I, if I said, hey, jump off this bridge, there's a 2% chance you'll live. There's a 98% chance you'll die. No one jumps off the bridge. But if there's a 2% chance that we can turn $600 into $16,000 day trading, we think we're the 2%. When really we're just jumping off a bridge and dying, I, you know? So it's like a lot of times people hear like, oh, well, some people are successful doing it that way. And it's like, that's another reason why it's called personal finance. As you guys can tell, I'm very passionate about finance. Okay. Guys, I really love finance and numbers and financial freedom. And again, the best way to get financially free is to, is to develop better relationships with, with the things most important in life. But like a lot of times we think, oh, well, you know, Grant Cardone never owned a home, and he says that if if I buy if you buy a home, you're you're you know it's it's not going to create wealth for you or whatever. And it's like, well, he might be the two percent, but a, a lot of other people they buy a starter home and then they move out and they rent that behind them, and then they drive by their dream home and they rent out that house. There's just so many ways to make money, uh, but we always focus on like the outliers and be like, I'm going to be like that. It's like no, they, like no, do do what's proven first establish a baseline and then, and then you can build from that foundation with some riskier mm -hmm. things if you want. But I don't know. That's why so many people start eBay reselling and then stop. And then they start Amazon and then they stop and then they start day trading and then they stop. And then they start a, 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 a trash can cleaning business and then they stop. And then they do MLM with doTERRA and Amway and then they stop. And then they start a snow cone business and then they stop. And then they're just like a few hundred thousand dollars in debt. And then they're really depressed. And then they really, really get into some issues. I give it time. Yeah. I don't know. A lot of people I don't... quit too soon as well. A lot of people, again, I, the back in the emotion parts, um, people stay stuck on that emotion. They're like, you know what? I just give up on it. I'll try something different rather than just making changes, doing something different by making changes on the thing that has shown proof that it has potential for them. And then now if they do something different, they got to start completely over and learn a different entirely practice and that takes up a lot of time and again being organized helped me save a lot of time to work smarter and what'd you say work harder and smarter i like that yep work harder and smarter 
Again, what you're saying about time. Did you know to be in the top 1% of podcasts, all you have to do is make it to episode 22. 90% of people that start a podcast don't make it to episode two. Nine out of 10 do one podcast to get seven views and they don't do a second episode. Uh, 92% of people don't make it to episode three. 95% don't make it to episode 10 and only 1% make it to episode 21. What are we on? We're on like episode like what 12 or 13 or something. Yeah. Something like that. So like we're already in the top 5%, which sounds pathetic, but we are, you know, (laughs) that sounds awesome, but yeah, you're right. But it's like, I don't know. It's like people can't (sighs) Do, do. I think people also need to understand. It's like, usually you don't make money in the first few years of doing something, you know, like we're all, we're all very happy with going to college and throwing $60,000 into a degree that doesn't have a positive ROI for the first like 14 years. But then we're really frustrated if we don't make money in our side hustle in the first week. It's like, well, like it's, it's possible to make money in your, I, I made, I made money my first week reselling and I've, I've never, I've never run red in this business. It, it's possible, but it's not probable. Like it making $100,000 a year is not easy. I think only 12% of Americans do that. Okay. So already 88% of people that you see on the street makes less than a hundred thousand dollars. Is it easy to be in the top 12%? No. Is it significantly easier to make a hundred thousand dollars a year reselling junk from the thrift store online than it is going to college for six years and then waiting to make a hundred thousand dollars 18 years later? Yeah, that's a lot easier. Is it easier to make a hundred thousand dollars selling junk online than it is to start an insurance firm and take twenty million dollars out of loans and debt to eventually sell your company for $18 million more five years later. Yeah, it's a lot easier to do this here selling junk online. But it's not, it's never been easy to make $100,000. Otherwise, the percentage of people making $100,000 would be 88 instead of 12. So just stick with things. Like just, you know, how, like, it, if you wanted to grow out your hair, but you kept getting discouraged and cutting it every four months, you, you'd have hair like mine. I don't, like, is that, is that not logical? I don't know. No, it's logical. And I think some people, like I was doing overthinking stuff rather than just, hey, this is very true and very simple. Why am I overcomplicating things? Again, I think because of emotions, like yeah. myself. It, it's, it's really hard. It's really hard to, to think in numbers. But if you just improve yourself by 1% every day, the thing about getting 1% better and then getting 1% better again and again and again and again if you do that for a whole year, you're not 365% better. You're 36,000 times better because five, 1%, okay, 100. 1% of 100 is one. Okay, so now you're at 101. Now, if you're 1% better at 101, now you're at 102.1. Now, if you're 1% better of 102.1, now you're at 103.2. And then it really starts to take off after that. And so if you're just stacking 1% better every single day, you're not noticeably better. You are a different person. But the challenge of getting 1% better every single day stacked on top of each other is difficult because there's not a stock in the world that just keeps compounding up, 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 up. It goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down. Just try to get one, just try to get 4% better each week. And sometimes you're going to be 8% worse, but then the next week you'll be 16% better. Just focus on getting better every single day and you will. Just focus on making more money on eBay every single day and you will. You will. Do you want to jump? If your focus on selling on eBay is just doing the same thing you did 17 years ago that isn't working now and just trying to drill that home then you're just going to keep getting like 2% worse. <laughs> yeah, you're almost defeating yourself. It doesn't mean you won't be successful and you could have a breakthrough, but I'd rather focus on something that's maybe new, but still in the avenue of what you're working on, just better items. Um, do you want to jump into the questions from Facebook? 
Yeah, let's do it. All right. Give me you a second. Hold up. Let's... Share screen. We always we always shout out the Facebook page super late into the show. Yeah. But if any of you guys haven't followed us on Facebook yet, we sell our island podcast on Facebook. Free. Wait, is this your post? Yeah, it's your post inside there, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Wait, Jake that's, that's asked... Nice and small if you want to read them to me. Uh, okay. Let me see if I could... No. Oh. I, I'm on an iPhone, so... Oh, no wonder. Yeah. I thought you were good at everything, even uh, seeing... Uh, Jake's uh, post was on our reseller and podcast space. Uh, is going to be, we are recording the podcast in a couple of hours. Any questions on topics? And then the first one is going to be Jordan Wigley. Uh, thoughts on the mobile product research feature? Well, I appreciate eBay rolling it out. It is. It seems very lacking in functional compared to Terapeak and even compared to just the normal 90-day active sold research for the new PR search, uh, product research search. You can't even apply filters such as new pre-owned I just don't find this useful at all. And for mobile, with just sticking to a 90-day regular research mobile. So for those who may have heard about it, most people don't or didn't use it was Terapeak. And what Jordan's saying that it's now had been a name change in it being called product research on eBay. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, they have this new feature on the mobile app where you can do additional research. Um, I am definitely under the mode of it. You don't need it. Just use 90 day search results. Um, you don't you don't need more information than the 90 day solds. And actually having more information may hurt you in the long run on some of your items because you think, oh, well, it sold for $40 two years ago, but today it's only selling for 17. So just look at the last 18 days, not the last... 1800 days in my opinion yeah i agree i actually know um shelby shout out to her who helps run um well terapeak and now research product on ebay i've got to meet her several times at a couple of events here in las vegas very cool person and there's always things they're working on she yeah. just had an interview on that herself with um another podcast the seller club and it was a really good interview, and she shared more about it. And they're, they are always um, trying to make it better for the resellers. And she is also a reseller herself. So it's not just one thing of somebody making a, a search tool of this sounds great. She is actually a reseller who could implement things and changes because she goes out to events, she gets feedback, and takes it back to her company, eBay, and implements them. But it all takes time. You can't just change things on a weekly basis because you need to see what actually works and what doesn't to the masses. But I enjoy it. Have you used it? I've been using it. No, I just use the 90 day search. 90 day I, it's pretty much the same thing. The only reason I use product search for, or for the, well, now it's changed too because the mark throughs of the price sold things uh, listed that you come across. I believe those are actually the price that the item sold for. Yeah. I've noticed that too. Before it wasn't, it was just, what's that number? Yeah. So now I don't need to use it. Nice. Um, Alexander Pittman, online arbitrage specifically for part-time sellers. Are there categories that online arbitrage just does not work right now? Things like video games seem particularly difficult to win bids on at the price that leaves room for margin. Yeah, it's just exactly the same as uh, used selling and every under every other industry in the world. Um, Eighty percent of people are fighting for the scraps, and then you have to level up and find what the eighty percent don't have access to yet because they haven't developed the skill set to acquire them. So, all it is is it, it, it's really just the same principles apply apply across all businesses. You just want to level up and make sure that you learn how to find these products. There's a lot of gurus on YouTube and the Amazon space that will just say, hey, sign up for my course and then we'll give you all this information every time they pop up. But there's also some really good ones that actually are just genuine and say, hey, listen, this is how to actually find these products. And if you find them and sell them, 
it's going to be better than joining a discord with 800 other bros that get this information and head to Costco the second that you do. <laughs> and there's some um, inside inside Facebook folks. Y'all could add your your um, expertise on this too to help others because we all have different backgrounds of what we use and why we use it. And yours may be the that one thing we may not have mentioned or that we don't know about that could assist somebody on what they're trying to do and get more experiences on. Uh, a shorter comment, uh, Brian uh, Buchholz, I wish y'all would rip the audio and release as a podcast to download the same a lot with uh, your individual content. We've talked about that in the past. Yeah. Yeah, it's just another step to do. We'll, we'll probably do it eventually. Um, but it's just it's just nice to just be YouTubers and to just post stuff on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm, let me see. Uh, Tallhead Wadnor, uh, the idea of road trips to source. Yeah, I've I've done I've done. Um, this is this is another thing where, you know, that video that Zach Rios did, he uh, said it's completely dependent on area. But um, I just I just know someone in every single state killing it. I re I really do. Maybe not Montana. I don't I don't know any influencers from Montana, but like. I don't know. And I know, I know two guys killing it in Indiana. I know a ton of guys killing it in both of the Carolinas. I know a ton of people killing it in Florida. I know people killing it in Wyoming. I know people absolutely slaughtering in Southern California and in Northern California and San Jose. I just know people killing it everywhere across the country. So again, it just comes down to your, your, uh, your capabilities and your knowledge and your skills and your experience. I've, I've thought about just like going to these areas where people say they can't find anything and then just doing a YouTube vlog about it and saying, Hey, listen, like, I know it's really emotional and really hard, but like, look, I found a ton of stuff today. Let's, you know, so I think, uh, that there's just, there's just so many things that you can do to up your game when you're traveling. Um, Gary V talks about this all the time. If you, if you go into Instagram, then you can filter location. And then you can type in, if you go to Vegas, you've never been to Vegas, you can type in wine. And then there'll be a ton of people posting about, oh, this is the best wine spot in Las Vegas, or stay away from this wine spot. We, we've been, you know, they've changed management and it's gone downhill. You can do the same thing. Just uh, type into your area, thrift stores on, on uh, Instagram, filter to your area, and then see if people are talking about, wow, this thrift store is garbage. Sometimes there's a good chance that that thrift store is still good. But if people are talking about it, go to it. So my wife is big on, um, like, when we go to movies, you look at the reviews and ratings. And mm -hmm. I'm like, why are you doing that? We need our own experience. Plus, I'm only there for popcorn and maybe a hot dogs at times, you know. It's really why I go to the movies. So I'm on that other end of, I will see a review and it might be bad, but I still need to see it for myself. Mm -hmm. um, next question is uh, from Justin Gross. It's a rising contributor, I guess, participator in the Facebook page. Uh, what is the lowest amount of profit you are willing to take on an item? Also, what are some of your biggest losses? Go ahead, Sonny. Uh, my biggest loss uh, recently um, is just breaking even. Things that I've had sitting around, and I've reached out to only two guys that are interested in my storage unit, and they buy things from time to time. So I will take a loss or break even. And for me, that's a loss. I've never really had a huge loss of, I would say, even like $20. I think if the loss was without the insurance would be a loss, but I used the shipping insurance. Um, I've never really had a loss like that other than breaking even on a very few things. And profit, it all depends. I think the lowest profit I would accept would be like 2 $3.00 for specific items because again i do buy things in bulk and i know i'm i'm more of buying for the things that have more value than the smaller items but i also don't just want to throw that away i want to see if i can make a couple of bucks when i'm on say whatnot a lot of people disagree with my philosophy here and it's all right if you guys do too but i focus on sell-through rate as my number one king metric that governs everything else in my business and what happens when you focus on sell through rate is you're only picking up items that are in demand and in demand items are more profitable than items that sit longer because people actually want them. So they will pay more to actually have them. So it's very rare that if you're focusing on sell through rate that you'll have low profit. 
Now there are instances where you find something worth $60 and someone wants $40 for it. And after all the fees and shipping and stuff, you only make like two or $3. That's not something that I'm interested in, but if your cost is good and the sell through rate is good, you're going to win. So I almost don't even have a minimum profit. I just look for a minimum sell through and almost every time the profit supports the sell through. I don't know if that makes sense completely. Though. No, and it then, makes complete sense. It's a sell through rate and it's telling you this is the, the actual numbers. Jake is a, a numbers guy and I've been working on numbers as well. And it, it is proof. If it has a history of good sell through rates, and the price for what it's going for, then that's almost a guarantee. But the only differences with these guarantees and sell through rates is how fast of a sell it's gonna be. That's what you're also looking for. And for me, I am getting better at that. And most of the stuff I'm picking up now are based off of the sell through rates being the best and not things that I'm okay of buying it for now because I'm just starting. I'm no longer a novice. I'm more of a, becoming more of an expert and reselling. And that's one thing I, I applaud people like Jake and others who are sharing information and just know that I could do better at the same time and not just trying to settle. I'm trying to step my game up. Mm -hmm. And then I, I just had, I just had a recent loss. Um, I had 237 clothing articles left in my eBay shop. And I commented, I mean, and I contacted Caleb sells another, um, <clears throat> thrifting youtuber that sells on ebay and uh he he does specifically clothing so i had 237 items that i probably have on average six dollars sunk into all of them so that's about fourteen hundred dollars and i just said hey man do you want all of these items um shipped to you and he's like sure so i'm like sweet thousand dollars shipped the uh shipping costed 150 dollars so i only got 850 dollars for about fifteen hundred dollars worth of um, purchased clothing that could have sold for about probably fifty five or six thousand dollars, but I just wanted to get rid of them, clear up space for my new inventory system, and, and make more room for faster moving items that have better profits. So I'm just like, yeah, I'll just take a I'll just take a small loss because I've bought and sold so many clothing that the profit has far exceeded that that mm -hmm. loss of like three or four or five hundred dollars. Um, but yeah. Sometimes, sometimes taking that loss is a win for your, for your business. Cause you just make space and time for, for your more profitable ventures. But yeah, like we've talked about, share the ups, share the downs. There, there's, there's just so, there's just so much, so much good about reselling. Um, Not good. Sometimes, sometimes maybe we just uh, have too high of expectations as well. Cause it's like, man, if you're making an extra $40,000 a year, that's great. You know, I feel like sometimes we're like, Oh, there, there, there's this, there's this thing in this, this book I'm reading um, about finance where it says we as creatures, we always have just, especially entrepreneurs or content creators, we always have a really good month. And then you make all of your plans during that month. And then things can quickly change to the downside. And then you're kind of screwed. So sometimes we'll make, I don't know, Let's say you made $15,000 in December and you're like super pumped about that. And you're like, oh, next year I'm going to make $15,000 every single month. And then you get to June and you only make $6,000. Now you're super stressed and maybe you're over leveraged and you spent too much money because you were planning on making 15,000. Just lower your expectations and just plan on making $6,400 a month. And if you make more, sicko mode. Sicko mode. Yeah. You got any plans of coming to Vegas soon? Um, June and July are nuts. Yeah, yes, June, June. Well, no, June and July, we just have so many family reunions. And all mm -hmm. of my siblings were born in June. My parents got married in June. Uh, all of my, my wife was uh, born in June. All of my in-laws. All of my in-laws were born in June, too. Like, I don't know. And then we have a bunch of reunions during July and stuff. So, yeah, it's just going to be crazy. I might not make it to Vegas for a while. We might go. We might go to Twin Falls. My wife was just telling me yesterday uh, that she has some vacation time. Although we just got a uh, had vacation, that was fun. Yeah, no, that was dope. you guys can Twin go meet Falls up right with now. Osborne to thrift while you're up there in Idaho. No, I don't think so. Osborne to thrift is a dope guy. I don't know who that is. 
Yeah, he 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 was he was doing content for a long time, and then he stopped oh. like like half a year ago or so. It sounds Being familiar, but I don't not too familiar. Yeah, Hawaii seems like it was a dope time. Oh, that was amazing. Got a good tan. Ate some good food. I only ate three pounds. Well, what island did you guys go to? Uh, Oahu. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. yeah, me and my wife definitely like going to Hawaii. It's definitely a definitely a dope place. We we plan on going a lot. It's a really good time. Yeah. It's funny because when we got back, first thing we went to was Zippy's, which is known and was created out there in, in Hawaii. That's funny. <laughs> the next day we woke up and Carlos like, You want you want breakfast? I'm like, Yeah, you know, like American breakfast, like biscuits and gravy. And she's like, You want to go to Zippy's? And I just laughed. I was like, sure. It's not like any men have any say so. You know, when it comes to where we're gonna eat, it's usually what at least what my wife wants. So it's like I don't even bother giving Dude, suggestions. Do you know do you know the hack though? It wouldn't work on her. Oh, it'll work. It'll work. Trust me. <laughs> um, a lot, a lot of, and we don't want to generalize here. This is just funny, but like a lot of times, women will you'll say like, "Where do you want to go eat?" I'm like, I don't know, wherever you want to go. And then you give like three suggestions, and they're all wrong, right? The best way to do things is just get in the car and say, "Oh my gosh, honey, guess where I'm taking you to lunch today?" Where? Guess. And the first thing you they say, just say, "Oh my gosh, how do you know?" And then you just go. Like, Not gonna work with me, buddy. Not gonna work at all. <laughs> I gotta work. Uh, I just I just accept it and just keep my little uh you know. Will she actually tell you where she wants to go though? What's that? Will she actually tell you where she wants to go though? No, she asked where do I want to eat, and I'll say, and she's like, I don't want that, and I'll say another thing, I don't want that, and I was like, well, where do you want to eat? I don't know, but she already knows what she wants because she usually has her phone open and it's already on Yelp, and she's looked at it. Yeah, I don't know what she plays with my needs. My wife's like, oh, I'm down for anything. It's like, no, you're not. Just where, where, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotta love it. Gotta love my wife. But yeah, guys, it's a really fun time. It's a good, good week of reselling. It's going to be a good year of reselling. It's going to be a good summer of reselling if you guys are willing to do what it takes to make money. That's it. And, and, end of story. I, re- I really think that's the end of the story. I don't know. You guys can let us know if, if we were off base here. But I just think it's significantly more the the person that's reselling than the circumstances of the reseller. Look at Paige, man. Doesn't even have a foot. Selling tons we're going to get better, though, stuff. folks. Uh, we all get in these ruts at times, and, and sometimes we're not as successful as we want to be. But these are only moments. These moments yep. will pass, and you're going to get to bigger and better things as long as you keep believing on yourself, even if nobody else does. Even if family and friends don't, they don't understand. Why don't you get a job that you know you could get paycheck every two weeks? You could do that if you want, but know that reselling is always there. If you want to make some good cash and feel like a boss and run your own business the way you want, which is what I did. And then after some time, maybe you might just say, I could do this full time because I've proven to myself that I've learned all of this and I could make this money. I could make more if I apply myself replacing that job into your job, your business. Do you subscribe to uh, Think Media? Yeah. Yeah. So Think Media just did a post the other day where it's like day one and it's it's like your friends and family's thoughts out loud. It's like day one, he really thinks he's going to make money on YouTube. And it's like 10 videos later. Oh my gosh, he's still making videos on YouTube. It's so weird. Finally gets monetized and the thoughts are still like, Oh, you've, you're finally making a couple dollars. Congratulations. Goes full time on YouTube. I always knew you had it in you, man. You're awesome. I'm so, congratulations. Same, same thing. Same thing across all industries, all side hustles, especially reselling. Yeah. People don't believe in you until you give them Made it. a reason to. And then they're like, oh, I always believed in you, buddy. Good job. And then you'll have ultra negative people in your life. And if you ever do influencer content work, even, even if you show like, hey, here's $6.9 million in a bank account, people will still be like, you're lying, you're a fraud. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, just uh, block those people. Don't block them because they help you make money on the internet. But just block those people out of your life and just keep just keep yeah. chugging along. Yeah, let them say what they want. You, you know what you could do. You know your potential. You know your worth. And that's what you really need to focus on is you and your worth. 
ladies and gents, if you want to share your finds, what sold, uh, comments that you're receiving and how you handled it to teach other people, you know, that there's more to just finding something and buying something. You got to deal with people, good and bad. You can share that on our Facebook page and we'll be happy to uh, share that and let everybody else see it. And I hope you have an amazing time. Thanks for coming out, guys. We are out of here, my friends. See you all in the comments.